service mm -hmm. they, they, they can provide to the, to the market. Yeah. So for those people, if you work, you ever work for the big company, maybe such experience may help you to, you know, shape mm -hmm. up your idea in the future. All right. What else? So Mark, okay, yes. Mark. Um, so for the, if you, for a startup, you know, even in a in big company, sometimes you, you have an idea, you have a solution maker, and if the mini team doesn't uh, agree with you, then you don't have to develop anything. And so, let's say, like, you, know, you can just call for yourself, start with yourself, and to fulfill your, your, your idea. And I think that the start will, you know, uh, will give you another uh, role, just like I mentioned, you know, either financially and also the achievement. Okay. Uh, what else? Let me give you another, uh, let me post another question to you, okay, related, okay. What kind of person or what kind of job may lead to, when I say, okay, what kind of character of the person plus what kind of job experience may lead one person to make such decision of startup company. So we saw somebody start out their company, probably from your co-worker. You saw somebody just left and for their own startup company. And some of your co-worker, they are so excellent. They just want to stay at the job. So probably you saw those people, right? Doesn't matter what happened to yourself. My question posed to you is, what kind of characteristic, what kind of character of the person, plus what kind of job experience may help people to start out a company? We gradually we will leave employment behind. We will leave that option behind. Gradually we will lead toward to start up career. So right now my question for you uh, discussion is what kind of character of person may help this person or may cause this person to start out the company? What kind of character do you think? I think the person, James, uh, yes. uh, the person has to be willing to take a risk. Okay, yes, and yes. It has to be very dedicated to the line he's working. All right. She's working. Okay. And they need to be able to sacrifice. We need to sacrifice not just the time. Sometimes you, 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 I see people, they actually uh, get divorced and, and they end up, you know, ah, it's yeah. so busy. So sad. My wife says, no, there's no time for me. Yeah. We just walk away. I had to, I had to be able to take those kind of hit. Yeah. And mostly, for those people, in the, in the sales marketing, I see a lot of people kind of towards that direction. Sales, right? Sales yes. Teams, a lot of. So people. before uh, before I go back to Daniel, okay, I, I know Daniel, you, you raise your hand, but to follow your questions, James, okay. The same mean the people in sales department more likely to leave the job and start up their own company more than the people stay in engineering R&D? Yes. Do you think more potential or more proportion people from sales department or marketing department, they may consider to start up their own sales team and more likely than those people stay in R&D department? I think yes. Okay. Yes. It At least that's your impression. Uh, I think the reason is to me, mm -hmm. my, my think the reason is for sales marketing, they have a lower startup barrier. The barrier is low. Okay. They, they, especially for sales, if they have existing customers, they have lots of contacts. Yeah. It's easy to start. All right. For designers, uh, you need a lot higher barriers. Mm -hmm. Not just the hiring people and mm -hmm. talent. Okay. And it's a lot, lot of time you need lots of money if you do hard work. Yeah. You do IC design. You probably no way. <laughs> when you put a hundred million dollars inside, you're not even necessary to succeed. Right, right, right. right? 
So Mark, hold your hand. I will give you the, the opportunity to Daniel. Right. Yeah, um, I think this, this characteristic, this trait could be a, a very good for them. It could also backfire with them. Mm -hmm. it's, it's their ability to, <laughs> they, don't care, they don't care what other people think. Okay. So it's like, if they, if they hear a lot of people, you can't do that, no, that's crazy, blah, blah, blah. You know, I say, I don't care. You know, I'm gonna, I have this strong vision, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. The other side is um, they can be so into that mode that they, they don't listen to wise counsel. Yes. So I think the really good one is they walk the edge very well. They know when to listen and when to yeah. listen. And they listen to somebody else, but they can make it their own decision. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's very, very unique personality you can find. <laughs> right. it's, it's very tough. Sometimes people just stop and you know, and they they fail off from the age, <coughs> you know. And as you say, some people just so careful. They they just always work on the age, and they listen, and they look, and they but they finally they make their own decision, and they take a risk. Yes, Mark. Yeah, I think uh, for a person uh, to to stop, they should have the patient. For okay. All right. And Be patient. Okay. 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 Also. Uh, the position wise, I think uh, I, mean, I have seen many as far. They all come from the technical background. Technical background, yeah. I mean. Okay. They have uh, some you know, innovation, okay. niche stuff. All right. So they can be under stuff. Yeah, so you just, you just give us another opposite idea. Even for these people from R&D department, maybe they have better idea. Because if they can control the new innovation, new technology, and maybe this is another another big, you know, big um, reason for them to start out their own company. Because I, I know some people, they are from R&D department. And even though we know this is very real, you know, unless you can, you can take away a group of people with you. Because usually you know, if you're from R&D, you cannot work alone. <laughs> it's very, very difficult for one person to work alone and start out your company. It's very, very tough. But I, I did see, Few people, they, they just you know, just leave the company and work as a lone wolf, you know, and they have a lot of pet patent, you know, they own a lot of patent, and then they just just leave and they start out their own design, designing house, and they they sell their technology, then they license the technology. Once they got the patent, they sell the te technology to the big company. So this is another model, maybe you know, even considering the, the case is like uh, I think you guys are going to the next screen, right? Next screen is from a sugar founder, one, uh, most of from Intel. Mm. And then uh, after the next one being bought by Juniper, uh, the founder, uh, Ken Sen, they, they created another company called Fortinet. So all come up with the niche solution. Okay. So really, hold your hand. Okay, I'll give you my reno. Uh, <coughs> relating with the marketing and sales of people, well, they had a better opportunity. I believe because they know the market, okay, and they have the connections to suppliers, okay, or to the buyers. Yes, they, so they, they link the supplier and the the, the customer. So yeah. that's why they had a probably a better opportunity because they know how to move in the marketplace already. Yeah. So they know, like, for for marketing people, they know they don't know how they know how to place the product. Right, and for sales, they know they, they know how to sell it. Right. So that's why they had those advantages. Yeah, in the, on their side. Okay, that's why. Okay. I, yeah. Ready? I think a, a, a good um, manager from the IND group uh, who can organize a good uh, a good group of, group of people and co-work with uh, some. The, uh, the manager should have some chance to co-work with. Uh, marketing people mm -hmm. and sales people. I think this kind of person will have its uh, be best opportunity to mm -hmm. to come up a good idea mm -hmm. that they can uh, make profit and the new startup. So I think this kind of okay. uh, job experience is quite uh, okay. un unique and uh, helpful okay. in starting up. <coughs> okay. All right, Peter? Yeah. <coughs> I think, of course, uh, some, some like a founder of Facebook, uh, uh, <coughs> uh, the Mark. So yeah. Yeah. It's from 
experience from the college, but I think right. just a few people can do that. Right, I very, very few people, <laughs> just all from college. <laughs> and use the same model from college, okay? Yeah. So I think most, wow. most people, yeah, like uh, Eric uh, really said that, uh, my impression also, like uh, the more like a uh, manager who are not the, the engineer and in the R&D, <coughs> when they have more experience, like uh, they probably have an idea or can take more risk uh, to go out uh, to have a uh, startup. And <coughs> and also, I think that there's uh, also from like a family support, okay. and uh, and uh, I, I heard the case is uh, when the R&D department was uh, laid off, and some people just uh, are under this pressure and like want their or some of them to have their business after this procedure. So, wow, so okay. that's amazing. Many many <laughs> different. Right. Yeah. So right now we are talking about two extremes, okay? <coughs> and we compare the sales marketing versus the R&D people. Uh, but how about those people in between? Any any opportunity for those people say they are in the service department, they just answer the phone call. For those people in the HR, they handle the paperwork. For those people in the accounting department, figure out the number. Any chance for those people? <laughs> Any any chance to think about any opportunity for those people to start their own company? Yeah. Maybe, right? Yeah. So yeah, maybe. So you know, after we talk about those two extremes, you know, another example is how about for the CEO to start a, his or her new business? He's the most. Yeah, for the top people. How about that? For those people, they already established already. Uh, can you imagine those people that got a multiple million, multi-million dollar salary plus stock option already and those people st still, you know, start out their own company. What for? Uh, what for? If, if, if you are in a, that such position, okay? Just for it's, it's Sher Sheryl Sandberg, okay? Her, her new book, right? The, the LinkedIn and you know, she is, uh, I read her uh, Wikipedia, her assets is 1.2 B already, you know, at age of 40 something, 1.2 B already, because, you know, she worked for Google and ran on Facebook, <coughs> and, and every year still, you know, multiple million accumulate. So very soon this woman, young woman will become, <laughs> I don't know, you know, she can retire anyway. But if those people, if those people still leave the company and say start out their own company, and for what? Working attitude. Okay. All right. Working attitude. Oh, so, one if achievement. Achievement. All right. For them is no problem. Yeah. So I think before we go into our two topic, at least we have two things we need to think about there. One is the life balance. Where is the balance? Uh, in the early stage, we try to get the survive, right? We try to find a job, we try to feed our family, and we, we actually try to get the security for our life. And later on, we got a very stable income already, we have our career already, then uh, any anything trigger our desire, trigger our motivation, to start our own, our own company. We may fail, we may succeed, but somehow we can maintain our regular life. Then more likely we will break through you know, the security mode and we enjoy our life. And we know our assets and the income we generate already may support our whole life already. Right, no, that is not too difficult in Silicon Valley. I think for the regular family, once you accumulate your assets up to net five million dollar, you know that number is not really high. Eventually, in this Silicon Valley, you can maintain your net asset around between three to five M. We don't talk about B. Okay, we talk about M level. We are M class. Okay. I think if we, for those people in the M class, okay, okay, by the way, not T, T is 1,000, okay? If your balance is keep 1,000 level, that's kind of, you, you need to worry about too much, okay? 
if we can maintain your balance uh, about the M class, all right? I think our life is kind of secure already. If you don't go to gamble, you, if you don't use a drug, you know, and then you don't, you know, get involved, you know, the, you know, the, the, those, those the, uh, mafia people. I think your life is kind of secure already, right? But for those people, they already overcome, achieve above the M class already, and still work, it's a workaholic, okay? You still want to work, say, 15 hours every day. You just cannot stop. You just want to get more achievement. And you think there's overreach. I, at least I think there's overreach. And so before we go to our real topic for this class, let's talk about how about the balance. And let's talk about what is the balance for you, for your whole life. And you, do you think your goal is work every day 15 hours until the moment you die, you leave this, <laughs> you leave this world? <coughs> and, uh, but another thing is we want to get secure, right? We don't want to see our balances at, at the T level. I, I mean the little T, okay, not big T. And nobody's big T. Yeah. Big T is a trillion, okay? I don't <laughs> see people as a trillion. I think the, li the, the little T, okay? You don't, you don't want to see you at a little T class, right? Uh, M class, I believe that's uh, is good enough. So let's talk about you know w w what would be your balance point for the whole life. So so let's start from James because you talk about freedom, and uh, one of the goal to start your company maybe you want to see your own company running very smoothly and very regularly and of course profitable, right? Then at least that profit come in generate from your own business can maintain your regular life and hopefully larger than your regular salary. And you earn more com uh, income every year, but you, s you, can small, uh, you can spend more time with your personal life, with your family time. I think, I, I believe that's a goal, right? Hopefully that's a goal. And in the meantime, as the Mariano just say, at the beginning, we need to sacrifice. We need to sacrifice my family. We need to sacrifice my, my you know, my personal life. But there's one point. There's one point you want to get a balance. You don't want to, you want to you want to leave the unsecure behind you. However, you want to spend more time with your family or with your personal life. So where is your balance? And when we say balance, we say how much personal time you want to control. So every day we only have 24 hours. How many time you want to control for your personal? And assuming M class is agreeable, hopefully, hopefully we agree M class is acceptable. Once you reach, once you enter <coughs> into the M class club, okay, then you you feel safe. Then let's talk about ourselves. What is your balance point? For me, I would try to still try to earn the pass to the M class, but not there yet. Okay. <laughs> Trying hard. Okay. And for me, if, 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 uh, to start up a business, it's, it's, the balance is very important. Okay, sure. Um, I won't think, I think like it, it's like a five years ago. Just, you, I really think that you have kids, that they're in a you know, critical stage of the study. Yes. They go to like, you know, move along. And then it started to point to you, it's pleased to me. Me, me, me different, it depends on this people's situation. Then if kids like, uh, my kids is going, my older one went to college, my older one's probably going to college soon. Then I'm thinking like, hey, then what I'm going to do? Mm -hmm. I'm going home with my wife and two people alone. <laughs> 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 Traveling <laughs> around the whole world. Yeah, but yeah. if I'm in the B class, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you want to have a private jet, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> but not quite there yet. So, so there's a long way to go. Then I start thinking, what should I do? Uh -huh. To my, you know, let's say I need to work another 15, 20 years. What should I do for the next 20 years? Okay. And, and the start of business is may not be, maybe too late. You know, a lot of young people start, you have full of energy. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you reach a certain age, you may not have such a, a, a energy, but you may have experience. There's, it's trade-off. Mm -hmm. 
the other thing is, uh, you eventually you can sell your business. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, me that's I another point. To win my own business if you really want to tell, sell your, your business, to, right? Yeah, until you sleep on the bed, if yeah. you have to move. Yeah. You really eventually you sell your business for yeah. your retirement. Yeah. yeah. It could be you know, small, but it's still yeah. a chunk of it. Yeah. cash. So this is a very good point, okay? When you pick up your business later on for yourself, uh, you need to talk about almost everything here. But for your own business, I hope you can put on one point, that's exit. By the time you want to retail, what is the residual value for your business? That means there's a resale value. <coughs> Some type of business, there's no too much resale value, like a lawyer. Because my client just follow me. If I sell my business to somebody else, my client might not go with the new buyer, right? <laughs> so sometimes the business, you have the resale value, but sometimes the business, you don't have the resale value. So when you consider your new business, maybe you should consider the resale value in the future. As you say, you know, maybe you don't want to leave your business to your, your children and maybe they are not in your, in your line, right? So another way to consider your, if you can choose, okay? Think about this, what kind of business you can maintain larger, greater, bigger resale value. So by the time you really want to retire, uh, you can easily find the buyer, okay? Of course, if your company is public, IPO company, that's not no problem, right? If you finally, you, you know, you win IPO, and anytime you want to sell stock, as long as you follow up the, you know, the uh, uh, SEC uh, regulation, you don't have the inside trader, you just sell it, then you retire. This is another way. Yeah. What else? To, let's talk about the balance. What, 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 what do you think is the balance for your own business? In terms of the time, in terms of the money you earn? How many hours do you want to work? If your business established, let's assume you already established your business. When I say established, mean you only like the people, you know, attend your your board meeting, say once a week, and you exchange your idea, you talk about with your staff, and what is your current situation, and what is the competitor right now on the market, and what is the potential, and what is the new uh, product or new service you're gonna provide in the next year. So, assuming your business is established already, how many hours do you want to work every week or every day? My opinion is the nothing with the competitor or business the situation. It's all about the working attitude. Okay. If the, the your startup company uh, grow up fast and good business and good uh, progress, good growth, uh, everything is good. But you like to work. Uh, very detailed, you like to work long hours, you, you still do this way. So even the company established, yes. you still, I, I think maybe it's attitude, right? I, I or personality. Yeah, just personality. So yeah. how long is too long? You only have 24 <laughs> hours, right? So even you have big, let me assume, you have a fantastic work, you know, attitude. You just like to work, okay? How long is too long? 15? Until you physically cannot support it. Okay, say so less about physically you can support it. How long is, is okay? Twelve? I don't think there's too long. It's at, at a point I see many people like that. They they, they treat their work as their enjoyment. It's yeah. Oh it okay. It is. Okay. Yeah. For so you is enjoyment, how about for your family? <laughs> then, then right? Well, yeah, that's not that's a problem. The when you talk about this, really, really for yourself, it's, it's kind of enjoyment. I just enjoy my, my, my life, you know, in, in my work. So I work 15 hours. But how about family, right? But, but so, yes. Even yeah. though you go home at the office, go home. You still work. You, <laughs> in your mind, yeah, you, you still work, work you right? About the yeah. Problem. Yeah. So, this is the kind, again, uh, to me, it's the kind of working attitude. So this is why I, I want to talk about the balance. You know, I know for some people that's enjoyment, but if we are not really selfish, we need to think about <laughs> all people right around us. So yes, go go ahead, Maran. I think as an owner, uh, entrepreneur, you will think about your company all the time, no matter what. But you have to set your mind. I believe that 
you had to separate from your personal life, from your family to your company. Otherwise, this is gonna be a chaos because your family needs time no matter what. And also you need time besides this is work, even though you enjoy it. That's, you need the balance between. So you have to set up like a schedule for you, like eight hours or 10 hours, and from there, if you're really established, 10 hours I think is more than enough to do whatever you have to do in the day. So if I understand from you, is you really suggest, you really recommend, uh, as the uh, entrepreneur, we really need to at least consider to separate our schedule, right? Yeah. When this is a family time, it is family time. Sure. But from Tyson, he think they may be impossible. If I understand correctly from you, as the, as the people really, you know, get into your business, maybe this is pretty tough to separate. Even your home, your mind is still on your yeah, business. Your mind, yeah. So we have two different kind of idea. One is from Mariana. I say you suggest uh, before we get into our own business, we need to think about that. Is it possible we can separate? You know, our life. You know, at home from your job. Uh, but probably this is an opinion. It is almost impossible. So, uh, ready. Uh, I think uh, you, you may want to separate to several stages because when okay. the is not good. making good profit, idea. Right. you might want to work over 12 okay. hours. All right. After your company is starting to make okay. profit, you can give more time to your family. Okay. Like 8 hours, uh, that's just like typical, okay. typical work. Well, at least this is a one time I suggest. You know, if, if, I, if I heard from uh, Dyson correctly, uh, I believe this is almost impossible. Every stage, you, you, your attitudes will be the same. So, I don't know. But at the later stage, you can hire a professional for work for you. So that's the problem. I know that, but if I heard from Dyson correctly, even from the, from the stage, you can hire people, just like Steve Jobs, you, you're still there. <laughs> you, you, you hire the professional, number one professional in your, in your company, you're still there. Steve Jobs only on one dollar every year, right? But, but his mice is 100% in the, in the company, right? This is why Apple was so successful. I think this is one major reason, right? So if I heard from Dyson correctly, for some people, this is almost impossible to separate your personal life from your, from your job. It's almost impossible. Yeah, I mean, I don't no, you have to have time for your personal life, even though you're going to be thinking about your business. But you have to try to enjoy your personal life, your okay. family. But also, when uh, when your company is already uh, established, established, mm -hmm. you can have you you have to learn how to delegate. Right, use a you team. You, you need to use learn, a team, right? Yeah, you don't yeah. you don't learn how to delegate, and you don't trust your your employees. It's gonna right. be really difficult for you. As an as a owner, an entrepreneur, to leave your job, right? Because you're gonna be all the time. You don't, you don't trust oh why you do this or you have you're gonna start questioning every single aspect when when sometimes it's the best for your company and you don't see it like that because you don't have control. So you you need to you have to take classes to learn how to go it too. You can learn that. Okay. I believe that. Okay. Daniel? Uh, I, I really think it comes down to your values as a person. Um, yeah. Maybe some people, they, like, if, I think the best if, if you're single, because then you don't have this problem. Um, but if you're married, you have to talk with your spouse, and, and then it's up to what, if they know you're the kind of person like Dyson's saying, and then realize that they can't accommodate you or they can't support that. You know that marriage is probably not <laughs> just gonna, not probably like, yeah either they either they accept it and then you know the overall quality of the relationship should go down but they mm -hmm. accept it or they you know it's gonna split I don't know if there's it's hard to think of a, a way to reconcile another another idea is um, not really think of uh, balance as ideal but think of more like blending mm -hmm. so rather than saying this or that you can blend them so. 
things that you can, you can do at work with family or um, uh, do things that are kind of blending the two areas so that you can have maximize for both. Yeah. Yeah, before I go to Mariana, okay, I think uh, the point is here. We know each person is different. Okay, there is no standard here. There is no standard say how many hours is known now. It's a Dyson say. Some people just just want to 100% devote it, right? Even your physically, your body is home, but your mind is still on the job. But I think um, uh, one, th one point from Relic is also considerable, is you, we can separate the stage. So at the beginning of the stage, of course, as Mariana you say, you know, at the beginning, we need to probably put in 100%. Everything is on your, on your otherwise you, your business gonna fail. Almost for sure, okay? If you still want to enjoy your personal life, probably there's no new business, I can say this way. Almost, okay? But as uh, Daniel said, okay, I think before we go into our startup company, I think one thing is very important. Other than that, we consider ourselves, we need to consider people around us. As Daniel said, if you are single, nobody cares. You only responsible for yourself, <laughs> right? Some people say, if you are single, right, you feed yourself, you feed out, the whole family fed out, right? Because you are a whole family. But once you're married, you, you have a couple, then you have a spouse, you need to consider, and then you have kids, right? So when I say balance, this is what I mean. This is what I mean. We need to consider the people around us. We need to discuss this with our spouse. Say, how much hours I need to involve, and we need to sacrifice. And hopefully, as Daniel just pointed out, and you can maintain your family. I do believe the good business people still can maintain family. I, I, just, I just don't buy the theory, you know, the, the good successful business people, then they're gonna lose their relationship. I think, you know, this, this is what I mean balance. This is what I mean balance. So before we go into the detail, and this is the only time I'm going to talk about this. And other than this, we will leave, you know, the family issue behind, we, we are leave our yeah. employment issues yeah. behind. <laughs> we are only focus on our start our company. All right? Yes, Mr. Uh, sorry, I want to add something. <laughs> For the people, they want to start up their own start, uh, start company. And they, are not, they, they enjoy, they uh, look for fun to challenge themselves. For the same thing, they stay with family. Uh, I stay with my kids. If the people, they like to challenge themselves. For example, they like to play basketball with the kids during the weekend. That's family life. Yes, sure. The so-called parents. But they want to challenge. They want to have, have the good team. They want to compete with tournament, something like that. Or they want to have the running. They, pre they set up the clear goal. I want to run marathon uh, in three months. Ah. And challenge myself. Something like that for the uh, entrepreneur they may want to set a clear goal for every single item. If the, you talk about to build a new house with your wife, and that person may want to study the architecture or the, the how to build out the house, what is the materials better for isolation, something like that. They want to understand more detail. Uh, in the end, uh, that's all about the Personality attitude, or the attitude. attitude. Right. Still, attitude. So right. still I, I, I agree, uh, Dr. Uh, the Professor Tom talked about that uh, the good businessman still can keep a good relationship with the family. I like that because there is so called balance, but there is attitude how you uh, handle your business, how you handle your topic, your family. Still with you, right? Yes. Still always with you. <laughs> <laughs> but that's fine, we omit it. <laughs> Good. All right. So uh, as I say, okay, we're gonna leave uh, the family issue behind. Uh, okay. There are uh, so many critical issues here in your book. We just briefly uh, talk about that. All right. If you took my uh, financial accounting a few weeks ago, you know return of something that's very important. So as I said, okay, no one gonna start out your new company just for fun. 
if there is, you name me now. You name me now. You say, my friend just want to start the new company just for fun. Okay? I don't believe so. So when you start out your company, think about what is the return opportunity. We need to think about this. Return on your investment. Uh, well, to limit, to, uh, limit our discussion, when we say investment, we only focus on the dollar amount. Okay, we don't talk about opportunity cost. We don't talk about the value of your family time. Okay, you say you lose your family time, we cannot you know, convert that as a dollar. So when we say return on investment, we only talk about how much money you can put in. Okay, we don't even talk about your time. Okay, time value, we just disregard it. We see how much dollar amount. So to limit our discussion, okay? So for any kind of, uh, so when you come out to do the presentation, uh, if you if you can come up with the ROI, that's good. But if not, usually for the startup company, there is no ROI. Okay, you can you can you cannot imagine how many startup company, you know, come out every day and close every day. The new company on the market, you know, you, you just cannot imagine how many. Okay, brand new on the market today and they close out, you know, sometime. So with, if we can find out the ROI, it's very good. But keep this in your mind. Okay, return on your investment is one critical issue you need to consider. So when you present your case, even though there's no sales at all, you need to give the perform uh, uh, okay? You need to say, what's the estimate okay, for your business? Competition, okay? As I say, <coughs> I do believe for each new company, usually the new idea come out from the problem. You don't satisfy. You are not satisfied with some solution. So let's say Tesla, right? If you follow Tesla, you know, their stock price is sky every day. You know, break record every day. And they will go higher. They will go higher. Why they will go higher? Tesla, right? Yeah. Right? If you predict we will see Tesla, more and more Tesla on the road, on the highway, and if every day you see more Tesla on the highway, you know their stock gonna be higher. Okay, of course, there's a lot of uncertainty of Tesla. Okay, but usually I use this company as one example because there was no Tesla five years ago, only come up with the idea, and the people really, even including myself, I really doubt, I really doubt, you know, I really doubt whether or not they can deliver the product. I thought Tesla just okay. I, I already admit, you know, my, my the mistake I made it. Right? I thought Tesla is not more than another company like uh, uh, the solar company in the Fremont. So yeah, right, solar tree, right? I thought Tesla just one another example of they just try to rip off the federal fund. <laughs> they just try to get something and they close out. And this 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 is my impression. Eventually, for each of the new uh, startup company. Usually, I just put myself in that position. I think this kind of company just can only give you the idea. They can only bring out the idea, and they just get the money and they run away. You know, I thought Tesla just one another example of that. Until early of this year, the moment I saw Tesla running on the highway, I saw the one, I saw two, I saw three, and then I saw Tesla in my neighborhood. I saw that, and. As I say, if if we continue to see more and more Tesla, sometimes even in your and my garage, and you know their stock gonna go higher and higher, you know. So again, you know Tesla is one of a very very few example. Finally, they deliver their product. Finally, you know, sometimes I really I really respect the the, the enterprise in the United States. If the business they want to do something in the United States, they will do it. 
And you know Tesla is much better than those, you know, made from Japan. You know, when I see, you know, the, the, the electrical automobile from Japan, I think this is just a toy, you know. <laughs> it's just really like a toy, 80 miles only. That's it. <coughs> You drive to San Francisco, you die there. <laughs> <laughs> you, you die there. You cannot, you cannot drive home. You cannot go home. And uh, when, when I see Tesla, I say, wow. I say, wow. If you know, if United States really want to do something, they just make it. They just, they just make it. You know, I really respect that. And I saw the, uh, one uh, demonstration on YouTube. And uh, Tesla, they come out with the idea. They want to build out, you know, they try to build out the uh, uh, battery replace you know at a, at a regular uh, the gas station it, it only took 1 minute 40 seconds to replace the battery they have a demo there you know the, the, the car just drive through you know like a car wash you just drive through there and everything replace the battery in 1 minute 40 seconds and they try to introduce this to the regular gas station. If they've been done, you know, they solve another problem. Of course, I know the final solution for electrical car is, you know, you have a wireless recharge. That, that is the final solution. You know, in, in Europe, they've done that already. They've done that already in Europe. Wireless, wireless recharge. You drive from, the, from Highway 5, all the way your car has been recharged. They will be totally solved the problem. <laughs> they, they've been done in Germany, in, in Europe. They've been done already. You know, you recharge your electrical car all the way, all the way when you while you're driving. So amazing, amazing. You know. So I do believe when I read this, I say every new company, every new business really comes from the problem. Because the problem is, if you buy, you know, the forty thousand Japanese, you know, electrical car is only eighty miles. You know, this is a problem. This is a problem. You can only go home between your job, your, you know, your office and your home. And you plug in, and you know, limit to eighty miles, and that is really the problem. Okay, so as I say. When you see, uh, when you do this analysis, competitor, you need to find out, you know, what is the problem your business you want to solve. So the current player is a competitor. So when Tesla come on the market, you know the competitor is only few company from J Japan. 